Saturday, but yeah, I'm bored. So, right. so okay. um, I'm just going to want to thank everybody yeah. and um, ask if there's any public comment. Do we have any members of the public here? Actually, I see we have some new faces. Um, so why don't we say hi? Hi. I'm Ty. My name is Ty. Ty, hi, nice to meet you. Thank you. <laughs> I'm Tyler Neiman, nice to meet everybody. <laughs> Brandon Brawl, nice to meet everyone. Um, well, yeah, members of the public, let's work here. Uh, we'll say finance manager for the bid. I am Miranda Edwards. I'm the deputy director of marketing and communications. Jasmine Ramos, I'm the project manager for the bid. Hi, Stephen Kim, uh, board member, uh, and Dan Benson. I'm Michelle, probably on the board. He's a property owner and board member. Linda Becker, property owner and board member. Uh, Mark Chadoff, property owner, board member. Suzette Wachtel, property owner, board member. Brian Bond, property owner, board member. John Remedy, property owner, board member. Anthony Rodriguez, operations director for the bid. Okay, welcome everybody. Uh, <coughs> let's get started with uh, our minutes. I don't know if everyone's had a chance to read that, but I am looking for approval of the basics. I know. I'm sorry. John. Wow, that was so quick. 
Um, so I do want to say that we're expecting, Karen Perry has asked to speak to the group. Um, so she's supposed to be here in a minute. So when she comes, I'll kind of turn it over to her. She'll speak just for a couple minutes. But um, just thought I'd give you guys and a couple of updates. Um, some of it was in the um, executive director's report. The, um, the first thing is thank you for filling out all of the committee, the new, the new committees that we created at the Board of Tree. Um, in your packet is we took your first and second choices and um, most everybody got their first choice. Um, and so this, these, this is the new committee structure. So hopefully everyone's okay with that. <laughs> um, and then the elections committee, um, so well, so anybody who's running, whose term is up at the end of this year, actually cannot be on the elections committee if you are considering running again. So Jessica and Suzette, that's you guys. You can, I don't know if you've decided whether you want to run again or not, um, but if you have decided to, you won't be able to sit on that committee. So we will need two additional people, um, and we'll need them in July because we start the nomination process um, in August. So I don't know if you have decided and you want to think about it. Sure, I'm going to get you okay. a decision now. So Perfect, get it done. And I'm going to recommend it. Okay, so I need two volunteers then. You are running, your term is up also. I know. Okay, so I need um, two volunteers. And up in the packet are the people whose terms are up. So let me find that. Volunteer duty, if I'm able to. You are able to. Yes. Okay, so Mark. The only people who come out are Mark Lee, Jessica, Suzanne, and Mark. So you guys come out the other So we need one other person to be on the nominating committee. I'm turned out, right? Um, I think everybody remembers that 
a group of Los Angeles street property owners got together and um, decided to put some money in and create a marketing plan for the street. Um, and then the bid matched those dollars with our remaining matching funds from the Los Angeles Street Streetscape project. The project um, has been, the process has been really inclusive and have had almost all of the property owners on the street contribute in some capacity. Um, we hired Haynes Marketing Company to come up with their internal documents, so exactly how they would market, what types of programs or <coughs> initiatives that the property owners could take on, as well as what the bid will be working on. And we're going to share that with you guys um, once we have it sort of in our minds, what we're going to work on the next couple of years as an organization. But also, the outer, the sort of um, the public facing marketing document just came off the presses today. We had planned to give it to you all, except we found a lot of printing mistakes. So <laughs> the printer messed up. Um, so you will get a copy. But this is basically what it looks like. It's really attractive, really pretty. Um, and it's a great mark. We think it's a great marketing document for, and this will be handed out, and the property owners will be able to use it to market to potential tenants, developers. We'll be able to use it when we're talking about the street. Anybody can use it really. It'll also be available in a PDF form um, as well. So, yeah, so it's, it's not, yeah, I mean, they really messed it up. Uh, but I'll make sure you guys get copies when they fix it. What do you want the PDF to I think the PDF's available now, is it? Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think they'll be able to print, like, they printed this in like three days. So we'll, we'll get this fixed quickly. Um, but, so yeah, we'll make sure everybody gets it. And then the we're going to also be setting up a meeting with the Los Angeles Street property owners to be way more detailed about and present this in a more detailed format um, to everybody. And we'll be presenting to them the internal documents as well. And I'm happy to share those with the whole board. But just for the purposes of the board meeting, this is this is what we're, we're sharing today. Gloria, did you want to add anything? On that, on the project, or, or how? No, I'm just super impressed with what Haynes has done and what the property owners have done together. It's, it's really good news in the environment. Cool. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah, it was exciting, and we had um, not just property owners involved in the process, but also tenants, tenants um, realtor brokers. Um, Tenants both from the ground level and also upper stories. So it, it was a really good mix of people that kind of were talking about the future. Okay, um, miscellaneous updates. I actually want to turn it over for a minute to Miranda. So Jasmine organized some residential meetings for us. One of the things we wanted to do beginning of the year as staff, we decided that since we're getting more and more residents in the district, that we wanted to kind of start to create a relationship with them and make sure that we were, you know, including them in the conversations and also, you know, servicing their needs. Um, so we met with, um, so Jasmine organized our first two meetings, which we had last night and the night before, and I thought Miranda could share a little bit about, especially last night's, because it was really kind of fun and we got some cool stuff out of it. Thought we'd share with you how those are going. By the way, my name is Miranda Kafko. I did get married on this oh, day. Yes. 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 I'm still so used to saying that. So <laughs> that will change up my email and all that good stuff. But that's my new last name. Um, so yeah, as Rena said, we've been doing these resident nights. And last night was our second one. The first one we did at Santee Village last week. Um, and then last night was at the Griffith. So pretty much our whole administrative staff goes. Um, we've been able to partner with a couple of local merchants to help provide food and beverage. So there's like wine, a little bit to eat. Um, and it's just been a really great opportunity for us to educate the residents on who we are and what we do. The majority of them have no clue what bids do and how they function. So we've been able to provide them with that information as well as kind of hear them out as residents. So um, it's good for us to get multiple perspectives and multiple voices from the district, as you all know. 
So as the residential community grows here, we're going to continue to foster that community amongst that group of people. Um, last night was totally random. There were a ton of little good nuggets that came out of it. Um, one being the residents that came to the mixer literally met each other for the first time and they live in the same building, which I thought was insane. Well, because it just um, opened at the end of the year. Of yeah, but you know, most of them have, they said they had moved into December and none of them really knew each other. So they got to know each other just as residents in the building. Last night was Santee Court or? The Griffin. The Griffin, okay. Yeah, last week we did Santee Village. Um, West Elm was there last night in partnership with us. They announced a uh, dog adoption community event that they're hosting next month. Um, and then on the spot, the owner of Pepper Club offered complimentary washes and cuts to any dog that ends up getting adopted at that event, which was fabulous. Um, we met a stand-up comedian who is super eager to get into vacant spaces and activate vacant spaces with pop-up comedy nights. So we're going to help her facilitate that. Um, we met a downtown blogger who we're hoping to connect with and potentially do a collaboration with. Um, West Elm has, I guess, a, an ongoing 20% discount for residents. None of them knew about it. They also provide an opportunity for local artisans and makers to sell their products and goods in the store. So they open up that opportunity for residents. So a ton of little nuggets that just came out of the one hour that we met with residents. So we're going to try to keep the train rolling and try to get into residential communities as often as possible and just keep fostering our community. So that's really important. Yeah. Yeah, and then, Brian, before I let you go, the, uh, just did you bring in a copy of those two brochures? Oh, yeah. So these are similar to the pieces that we did for the West Coast Urban District Forum. Um, we did a small batch just for residents because um, they're a little bit more in tune with what's already here. So this is more like insider information that a resident would need to know. Um, and then we also did one for the buyers for this past week's LA market. Um, and the showrooms distributed this to buyers that were coming into the district. So this is like where to go shop, eat, hang out, grab coffee, all that good stuff. So we have extra copies of these if anyone's interested in taking them. Mm -hmm. Can I make a, a comment to these? These are amazing. But we stayed at the level uh, last week in our father's day. And um, they do an annual, I don't know, like an annual, like a year book almost, of new and upcoming things downtown um, in all the districts. So, and they have the map there, and it's just a really, they like, the format of it, but maybe if, like, we as a bid, we're giving them also more information and more business has to be included in that book. So it's really beautifully changed. We'll try this tonight. Yeah. At the level you said? Yeah, at the level. They have it in every room. Okay. And so it's like a, yeah. they call it their yearbook. All right. So I figured that you would be cool. 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 Los Angeles County Board of Supervisors a few weeks ago, 
I was sitting down going to the archives of the Los Angeles Times, and I was clipping articles uh, of people who had died or been murdered in Skid Row uh, because they were living on the street. And the reason that that is an issue for me personally is because some of you may remember we go out month, once a month with uh, the Business Improvement District further east, with mental health workers, with public health workers, people from the county, people from LAPD, lots of outreach workers with vans and trucks, and we bring people right in, right then and there, if they agreed uh, for services. Um, and I remember one night when we were walking, uh, the captain of the Central Division, uh, Captain Wakefield, and we were walking, the sun was going down, and we saw a lady, and I'll always remember this lady because the sun was in her eyes, and she just had kind of greenish brown eyes, and we stopped, and we talked, 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 and we begged her to come in, told her it wasn't safe for a woman to be out there, there was a bed about 500 feet away. She said no, and so of course we couldn't enforce her against her will. Um, she, uh, I opened the paper two days later and I saw her picture in there. She'd been murdered a few hours after we left her. She had been stomped to death. And while they did catch the person who did it, she still died. She, she, you know, the, the article talked about the fact that she had a family. Uh, she had a, a place in South Pass. And she had addiction issues. And she died. Um, second story, which took place further south, but also in the district. Um, I got a call from a church down in Vernon Central pastor said there's a man living behind the church and so you know went down there took a look had to get 10 trucks to clean it out and then you know buckets for the other stuff and then has Matt to come and spray the area down with bleach uh, called the fire department because he I'm not a doctor but it was clear to me that his leg was necrosing or it was dying his leg was gangrenous and I'm um, sorry you guys are being... <laughs> I'm sorry but anyway uh, and he did not want to go um, so as he got loaded onto the gurney, he said, I don't want to go. And I said, well, you're going to have to go because you're going to die if you stay here. And I'm not going to let you die. So uh, he said, well, then I'm going to sue you. And I said, OK, that's fine. Here's my card. And if you live, and if they don't take your leg, you have your lawyer call me. And uh, they took him to County USC. And I, of course, never heard from him again. Um, but I think the thing for me in that situation and the one before is, Things that you do when no one else is watching uh, are the things that matter most and that you make the right decisions, the moral decisions, uh, basically to save people's lives. So, you know, it is with an enormous amount of anger, frustration, whatever you want to call it, that I've had to watch since 2013 all the work that I did, the activist work, also the construction of permanent supportive housing, and uh, even working with the nonprofit housing developers to use innovative and more rapid construction techniques, like at the Star Apartments, where the residential portion of that building was flown in by helicopter and then modular construction to speed things up, like when I worked with my own city council to find year round funding for the largest <coughs> homeless shelter in the city to give LAPD an alternative to arresting people and then letting them back out in 72 hours and a psychiatric lockup, but to, to, to be able to put them in this shelter, which is on Broadway in South LA in, in the manufacturing area, very discreetly located. I would challenge you to even find it um, because there's a transportation plan and clients are bussed in and they're bussed out so people don't walk to it. But the whole point of it was to get people stable, uh, get them back on their meds, get them uh, wraparound services, before they are moved forward into more transitional or permanent supportive housing uh, so that people are not just taken directly from the street, thrown in a room and said, hey, good luck, you know, hope it works out for you. Because it doesn't work out. Um, those are the kinds of things that I did. And I actually, uh, when I was in service, uh, worked on 5,670 units um, and uh, lots and lots of programming. Um, but I was very, very active, very passionate about it. I have learned some uh, new techniques the last five years in financing, not only financing programs, social enterprises. Uh, I worked on the uh, social enterprise associated with the Downtown Women's Center, just to give you an example of a way to employ people who are formerly homeless with dual diagnosis, people coming out of the criminal justice system, uh, people who have all sorts of issues, and to create a social enterprise for them uh, to, so that they can learn to mainstream and eventually, you know, put their lives back together in a more complete way. Um, I have a great sense of urgency, and I think that's why it's been so hard to um, observe what you're going through. 
uh, that there's no sense of urgency that I can discern. A lot of theory and a lot of conversation, but not a lot of urgency. And so I want to ask you uh, to consider uh, my candidacy uh, for Los Angeles County Board of Supervisors, which would unlock the doors to many more resources than I had even as a council person. And I want to leave these uh, remits with you uh, so that if you would consider uh, supporting me and supporting me before June the 30th, uh, this is going to be a very competitive race. I'm excited about that. Uh, every race that I've ever been in has been competitive, so it's, it's nothing new. And it'll be a big race, and I need resources to be able to run it. Uh, I need resources to pay for phone banks, to pay for mail, and to get my message out. The message that I will be getting out will be heavily, heavily focused on homelessness and uh, how to address it, how to prevent it, and how to help people who are out there in the street. Uh, and what that means uh, as a region. Um, I will be representing a much larger area, uh, which goes up to 6th and San Pedro, which is the, the back door of Skid Row, uh, and heads south, uh, most of uh, the uh, council district south here, on into Compton, Carson, Gardena, Hawthorne, Inglewood, Culver City, parts of Westchester, Mar Vista, Palms, uh, Playa Vista, uh, parts of Pico Robertson, uh, Mid-City area, Koreatown, and then perhaps back downtown. So, that's all. Yeah, that's all. Yeah, actually it's funny because that's one of the smaller districts. Really? Yeah, because there's 10, 10 million people in the county, divided by five. But it's not equally divided, so yeah. And um, I have to raise over a million dollars. Now, just so you know, when I ran for mayor, I raised over a million dollars. And with matching funds, I got to $2.5 million. Um, so I already had a dress rehearsal on how to do that. I already had a dress rehearsal on how to run a massive field operation in a highly competitive race. So, you know, didn't win that one, but little did I know it was a dress rehearsal for this one. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I've had my dress rehearsal and I'm, I'm ready for my close-up. Mm -hmm. And uh, <laughs> I hope that uh, you all will uh, be supportive of me. And uh, if you want to really and truly help me, tell your friends and you can give online. And uh, if you can do it before June the 30th, that would be um, just over the moon and back. So thank you. Does anyone have questions? Yeah. Uh, first of all, thank you for taking your time to come here. Mm -hmm. um, you come across as genuine and authentic. Mm -hmm. and appreciate you not DSing us. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> <laughs> sure, anytime. <laughs> <laughs> um, what, I'm sure you know the numbers. Mm -hmm. There's 60,000 homeless on the streets of LA right now. Mm -hmm. What do you see as the causal factors? And uh, I'm sure you get that question a lot. And also, what can the fashion industry do for you? Well, you guys are already doing a lot. I mean, you're picking up a lot of trash, and you're working in a coordinated effort uh, with the other business improvement districts to try to keep the area clean and also to uh, inform people who are on the street about services. So I'm extremely, completely well aware of that. What is the causal effect, causal, or the reason for that, the rise? Yeah. Um, so many factors because there's so many different types of people who are out there. Some people are just out there because they've got a co-occurring disorder. They may be, uh, they may have addiction issues, they may have lost their job, um, they may be victims of domestic violence. Um, there, there's, there's all kinds of reasons, so you have to kind of parse that out. Uh, and there's also elderly people out there uh, who are ill and don't get enough uh, subsidy or benefits to be able to sustain themselves. One of the things that I'll look at as a, as a, a county supervisor is the amount of general relief that people get because it's certainly not enough to enable them to sustain themselves in a basic decent housing on a month-to-month -month basis. So sometimes what you'll see is people can, can get like three months of housing and then the fourth week they're out on the street and then they go back in when they get their next check. So there's that going on. Uh, veterans, again, different situation um, because they have their own universe ecosystem, but not everybody's <coughs> plugged into how to access those benefits. And again, if you have a combination of uh, even physical health issues, mental health issues, it's a different kind of outreach. So I think it all, it all depends. And then, you know, the thing that's unique, well, I think, I don't know if it's unique to Skid Row, but, you know, I, I went out there at night uh, a lot. And I learned a lot by walking around. 
and I was out there with a lot of different people, including Officer Dion, uh, you know, who showed me a lot. I mean, one time we were out in the day with another supervisor, and we went over to the park across the Jim Wood Center, and there was a lady there, uh, and a drum hole at the table. You know, if you know Dion, you know he commands a lot of respect, uh, because he's been in Skid Row for 20 years. And he just went up to her and, you know, took all of her drugs, and he said, sweetheart, you don't need to keep those drugs. And I think he had a towel or something like that. He just took them. And everybody in the park started laughing. Mm -hmm. But because they respected him, you know, because they know that he loves or and cares about them. You know, and some of the people who were there to prey upon them, you know, just stood way in the back there on the edges and they're yelling, oh my god, you're crazy, man, you're nuts. You know, because he just took them. So, you know, you gotta be out there to understand what's going on. Um, it's not what people necessarily think it is. I was um, at, at a tent the other day and took pictures and they had propane inside and two huge canisters and it was a plastic tent so if the propane ever blew up, I can't even think about that. I mean, not only would noxious fumes, it would hurt the people inside and probably take down all the other tents on either side of it and it would melt, you know. Can't even put that out of the water. So, um, I have a lot of expertise. If I'm elected supervisor, I plan on asking people to work with me, hire people uh, to work with me. One of the best people they had at the county, but he had to go to New York, was Dr. Katz. Did you ever meet him? Yeah. Yeah? No. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 He, he was, he, he would have taken us to a whole other level in, in addressing the needs of people who are homeless and getting them off the streets. But he's in New York now. I don't know. I'm, I'm looking for top-notch people to work with me. That's what I intend to do. And I don't think, I can't say to you there's one cause for homelessness because there are so many housing, income inequality, mental health, uh, family issues, transportation issues, uh, uh, not enough inventory of housing that is affordable, uh, or even low income, low to moderate income, all those things, all those things. It causes a lot of stress. When I think about little kids that I've seen over the years who've had to endure um, levels of violence, even in this city, they have a level of toxicity in their lives that can cause long-term health effects, including PTSD and um, you know, digestive heart health issues. And so it makes all that together. Yeah, it's a toxic. Uh, mix that leads to more and more instability in people's lives, and, and those are the things that I want to address. Yes, uh, if you're elected um, county supervisor, mm -hmm. other than addressing the homeless crisis, what other issues are? No, it's, okay. <laughs> it's a major issue affecting our city. Yes, of course, of course. Yeah. But what other issues would you be focusing on that you know we could um, you know rally behind you as business yeah. you know yeah. people in the downtown? Well, obviously, the development of housing that is affordable across the region, and to do it in a way that's much faster, much more cost-effective. Um, I'm very excited about some of the smaller projects that I've seen. Uh, just looking at a modular project the other day over in Laverne Park, I think it was less than 20 units. But just to be able to create a platform for uh, developers to either come in through an enhanced infrastructure financing district, uh, if the Opportunity Zone funds seem to be doing better by that time, uh, to be able to uh, you know, create more opportunity there. Um, I'm watching this movement from back east called Buy the Walk, uh, you know, where people come in and invest in, in their own community to be able to build the things that they need, the neighborhood retail, in and around transportation corridors. Uh, but based on experience with working with the redevelopment agency, I can tell you that once the redevelopment area south of the 10 freeway was drawn along transportation corridors, you know, you protect the single family neighborhood, which I think is an issue here that I don't think we need to waste a lot of energy, you know, fighting that when there are so many other areas in which you can develop <coughs> transportation corridors, uh, manufacturing zones that have no infrastructure and nothing on the books for the next 20 years. Um, and then look at this. Uh, look at the opportunities for um, clean tech opportunities um, in areas that are maybe a little bit further out but still in proximity uh, to people's communities by a reasonable transportation either in place or coming in place and then working on pipelines with um, high schools, community colleges, 
uh, to deal with um, not only the science, technology, engineering, and math, and STEM, and STEAM, and getting these kids in the pipeline through some of the major engineering institutions here in the region, like USC, and UCLA, and Caltech, and all those, so that we can prepare our workforce uh, in a much better way for the technological uh, opportunities that are here. I know we talk a lot about Silicon Beach, but I haven't seen a lot of transformation uh, at the local level uh, to um, going further south, going further east. The only thing that I do see is people moving out of that, that, that strike zone where there's that high concentration of high-tech buildings and moving from the west to the east to get more affordable housing to basically get more for their money because they've got all these very high priced, very high luxury apartments where four and five people might live in one. Um, but you know, for when people start having children, they whatever, they want to have a different kind of life, they're moving east. And that's why you're hearing so much about gentrification now more than ever before. Oh, you, are you running against a professor? Right? Yes. That's it? <laughs> 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 no, I got another question. But I have a question. Yeah, you yeah. did. Another question. Well, uh, what, on the other side, you walked to six in San Pedro. What's, who represents the other side, or actually would be the hardest to get right about? Right, right. So the still is. OK. Yeah. Yeah. Quick question on the homeless. Um, <laughs> um, the HHH money, who is in charge, I believe the county is in charge of that H. money. Hmm? H. 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 Okay, this is how you remember. The city builds the housing, the county provides the money for the services on site with the housing. So HHH, okay. the city sponsored initiative, which is for the housing, has an oversight committee. Now, I don't work for the city anymore. I quit at the end of 2018 so that I could go and run for supervisor full time. Um, they, I believe they have an oversight committee. And the oversight committee, I believe, has encumbered, um, I, I can't give you an exact figure because I don't want to make it up, but a significant figure. So the question you may want to ask is, now that the money has been encumbered, where is the, um, Choke point on that. Where, where, where are these projects in the pipeline? And how do we get them to be reasonable uh, projects with affordable instead of these multi-million-dollar projects that have a few, you know, dorm-like rooms? And I don't see the way they're spending it. And I thought we were told that the money, the the 1.2 billion, which was HHH. Mm -hmm. For some reason, I thought we were told that that was the county was in charge of releasing the money and they weren't releasing much of the money. Well, I don't know. I, don't I can't speak to what you're okay. told. All I know is what I know. Yeah. And, and then remember, the county provides the services that are on site. Services. So that's like, you know, whatever, psychiatric, medical, um, job training. Um, every project that I ever worked on, I always made sure that we had county money in the project so that we had the support <laughs> services on site uh, for the clients. Um, and this was before H and HHH. <laughs> then that was when we had a redevelopment agency and we had tax increment financing. And then I'd work with the county to get the support services on site. And they always did because, you know, we were producing units and all they had to do was put their programming money into it. So it was a win-win for both the county and the city. And, and that's the model that they need to be following. And again, why it's taking them so long to roll this out, I don't know. But you could probably get somebody from the housing department to come over here and tell you. And and Jen, you probably know about the bridge housing project yes. on Coloma Street, which is in our newly expanded boundaries. Mm -hmm. So that project is a city, it's the mayor's bridge to home project mm -hmm. for transit, tra temporary, transit. transitional yes. housing. And then uh, the county is providing the actual services within the structure. Right. So they're contracting with the, it's called, um, Home at Last. Home at Last. It's called Home at Last, the organization. And they're going to be like the servicing group for yeah. the, for the, I think it's about 118, 120 beds. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's how, yeah. yeah. You're, you and I are basically saying the same thing. It's the same kind of template. Right. Yeah. Yeah. 
if anybody wants to walk over to the block um, the, to vote. We get, we, anybody who lives or works within the fashion district can vote um, for two fashion district representatives, one for business, one for residential, and also the at-large member. And the neighborhood council is essentially an advisory council to the city council. Um, we've had a seat on that board, not that we get elected, but um, Jasmine has been on that and she is also running again. Um, our, also Michael Olivera. Olivera, who is our director of security, is running in the residential seat because he lives in this district. And who's the other third person? Ryan Abari. Ryan, Ryan Abari okay. is also running. So um, after this meeting, we are going to go vote. So if anybody wants to come, you have other reviews. You have to do it physically this year. They're not allowing online voting. But if you don't have your documents, you can vote provisionally. So you do still have to have like an ID and you know proves that you're in districts. But you, if you don't have it with you today, um, you can still vote provisionally. Uh, that's it for me. Anybody want to bring anything up or questions? Just one thing on the last uh, the share of the stakeholders, the share of the that we had last month, um, the presentation by the city planner. Um, and I spoke to her afterwards and I asked if I could um, you know, get a copy of the presentation. Oh, we sure can send that to you. And, can have, and you know, she said that she was open to like, you know, changing the plans by input from the property owners. So I think that was, there's some value there, but I haven't been able to get in contact with her. So if there's any, any... So we're, yes. Um, Miranda, can you send that to actually to the whole board? Mm -hmm. um, we did get her PowerPoint presentation, so we can definitely send that around to you guys. Um, and then they are, we're monitoring the process. So when they're ready to start with their next phase of public comment, I will absolutely let you guys know about when those opportunities happen. This was at the annual meeting? Yeah. You yeah. must have a presentation. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we, uh, thank you for reminding us about that. Yeah. Anything else? And I'm, I'm, you know, I'm encouraging you to give me feedback on that executive director's report and sort of the detail level. Like, let me know if this is what you were thinking, or if you want more detail or less detail. So, welcome to the, you know, I welcome any feedback. Thank you. All right, excellent.